Hi everybody and welcome this morning to our presentation. Uh, here we have, I know we've had some other speakers earlier today, today we have Anastasia Steinbrenner. She is Supervisor of Education with the Clearwater Aquarium. So she is going to tell us a little bit about what they do over there, some special things they have going on. Um, if you happen to have questions, uh, as you see on the screen you'll see the phone number 727-755-3452. Uh, Please text your questions and your first name to that phone number and we'll be happy to answer those questions either during the presentation or um, during the presentation or also you know at the very end. So I hope that you enjoy and Anastasia take it away. It's all yours. All right. Well, hey everybody, I'm really excited to be talking to you from live from the aquarium today. It's pretty neat technology we've been able to connect with here. So I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about not only the aquarium itself and some cool things about the um, animals and the environment that we help and interact with here, but as well as talk to you a little bit about the different career paths here at the aquarium. We have over 200 employees in many different career paths and um, different areas of operations to talk about, but uh, today I'm going to focus on just a few of those different areas, and then of course if you have questions about the um, other areas of operation, I'm happy to answer things about that as well. I've been here at the aquarium for about a year and a half. Like Stacy said, I'm the supervisor of education programs. So that means I get to do the designing of our educational programs, our curriculum to make sure that students like yourselves are learning and having fun at the same time, learning about the marine environment and the cool things uh, we do here at the aquarium, like our very important work. Um, I'm going to also be sharing a uh, Prezi presentation with you. So we'll do kind of a screen share, but you'll see me some sometimes and you'll see the presentation sometimes and we'll kind of go back and forth and then I have a few special guests right over here I'm going to introduce you to as well during a portion of the presentation. Um, I came to the aquarium again about a year and a half ago uh, in uh, April of 2013. I was fortunate enough I've done two summers of summer camp which is a really fun program here. I've got to do neat special projects um, like helping with our stranding team and our turtle team um, and I'll be able to share a little bit about that with you as well. So um, I did want to mention that even though our name is Clearwater Marine Aquarium, if you've ever come here or if you ever plan on coming here, it's not going to look like any aquarium you've ever seen before because we are a working marine animal hospital where all of our residents otters, dolphins, sea turtles are all permanently injured, non-releasable animals. That means they can't go back to the wild, so we give them a second lease on life here at the aquarium as animal ambassadors for their species, helping people learn more about them, like yourselves, and hopefully encouraging you to make different choices in your own lives to help protect those wild populations. We also have some other animals here, like our sharks and rays. We have some seahorses, a really cool tessellated eel named Spot, and those animals are not injured. They are here specifically for education purposes. So I'm going to jump into our presentation here using this really neat technology. Open that up and start sharing. All right. So hopefully right now you're seeing our uh, presentation, Clearwater Marine Aquarium Careers and More, and I'm going to zoom in here on some different portions of it. Um, on here is our mission. So Clearwater Marine Aquarium is a nonprofit, that means a 501c3 organization, and our mission is to preserve our marine life and environment while inspiring the human spirit through leadership and education, research, rescue, rehabilitation, and release. So that's a pretty big uh, area that we cover, not only helping rescue, rehabilitate, and release those animals, but inspire people to protect them, preserve our natural environment, and educate folks like yourselves about it. Uh, we've actually been around, um, our roots date back to 1953 when we were a preserved fish exhibit called Sea-O-Rama, but we became the Clearwater Marine Science Center in 1972, and we got this building that I'm um, 
this area where I'm broadcasting from in 1978, which is actually a water treatment facility, uh, which had, you know, large capacity tanks enough to house some of the marine animals that we uh, have been deemed non-releasable by other organizations like National Marine Fisheries. And uh, the build I'm actually in now is our brand new um, education and hospital wing. So this is a very exciting time at the aquarium where we've been able to grow and uh, you know, do more for our resident animals and the wild animals that we rescue as well as do more of our education programs. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we have over 200 employees at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium and over 500 volunteers that help do everything from educate, work on our hospitality department, care for our marine mammals. We also have folks that work in food services, our marine and boating department, retail, marketing, web department, graphic design, um, you know, a whole lot of people making sure that our animals are well cared for and we can continue our mission. But I'm just going to talk about a few of the different career options today. We'll zoom into our education bubble here, obviously close to my heart as I'm a uh, part of the education department. So our first CEO here at the aquarium, named uh, a biologist named Dennis Kallenberger, was a huge proponent of public education and began our first summer camp program shortly um, after he was hired in 1979. So I'm going to zoom in here. You can see some of our campers having a great time. They get to go actually out and immerse themselves in the marine environment. You can see this young lady here finding a sea star out there. We have classroom programs and activities where you can learn more about um, biology, water chemistry, as well as um, the exactly the kind of work we do here. You know, in one of our summer camp programs, the kids actually get to do um, mock rescues. So they'll go out and rescue a stranded dolphin um, that we, you know, we have organized with our stranding team. They get to talk to people who do the real work here at the aquarium. So it's a really neat and unique experience. Um, we not only offer 11 weeks of summer camp from June through August, but also holiday camp programs October through December, after school programs, and on-site field trip programs during the school year. So we're very, very busy here in the education department. Um, another set of cool programs we offer are our boating program. So you'll see here on our Sea Life Safari program, these folks are looking at some of the marine animals that we will pull up in on one of our otter trawl nets, where we actually go out into Clearwater Bay, drop the net, and as it flutters along the sea floor, it'll gently scoop up some neat animals that we get to look at and even bring back here to our classroom. And actually... I have some of those special guests here right now, so I'm going to go back to the main screen here. Hopefully. And show you some of these guys. My computer will cooperate. Okay, so I think you folks can see me right now. Am I right, Stacy? We're looking at the Prezi right now. Okay. It seems like my screen share button wants to stop sharing. Well, we'll go back to the Prezi and I will work on that for you a little bit later. Um, so we also have here another boat tour that we operate, our Dolphin Adventure Tour, which is very exciting. It gets folks in the shoes of a marine biologist. You get to go out there and uh, do things like water quality testing, looking for our local bird populations and monitoring them, as well as participating in our Dolphin Dorsal Fin ID Research Program, which is a really exciting new program we've been doing over the past year. But we'll talk a little bit more about that research later. Down here, we've got another one of our really fun programs that we do year-round and also with our summer campers, which is our kayaking programs, where you can get out there in the marine environment on a guided kayak tour, learn about the plants and animals that are out there, and hopefully see some of those neat creatures as you're out paddling. 
We also do uh, community outreach, so you know, going out in the community, doing tabling events and talks like this, and we do some beach cleanups. That is always a fun experience to be able to help our marine environment by removing trash and debris that could potentially harm our wildlife and um, the the ecosystem that is around us. So we have those beach cleanups a couple times a year that we're always happy to have people come and help with. And we also offer a, an exclusive Winter's Wildlife Warrior patch for any uh, scout troops that come here and do programs at the aquarium. So if you're in a scout troop, you can come and sign up for one of these programs. It's a really neat experience and you get that really cool patch as well. Uh, so like I said, we are definitely big proponents of research here. Out on our dolphin adventure tour, we do the dorsal fin ID program. We'll zoom in on that there. Dorsal fins on dolphins is, are all unique. It's like their fingerprint. They're all different. So we can use their dorsal fins to help identify them out in the wild. We can identify one individual from another. In this picture you see on your screen, you'll see Low Notch, and she got her name from the fact that she has a slight piece missing on her uh, lower part of her dorsal fin and she's swimming there next to her calf Jay. She was the first dolphin we were able to identify and actually she's the one we see most frequently. She's one of our nearby residents so it's really neat to have her, um, her around on a regular basis for us to study her and learn about her behaviors and the other dolphins she associates with. And it's also been really fun to see her calf Jay grow up. Um, they'll interact with another mother calf set, Pat and Callie, that we see them often interacting and playing with each other which is a lot of fun and something the folks that go out on our tour get to observe as well. Um, research is an important component of every department here at the aquarium, especially the education and animal care teams. We're always learning more not only about our wild populations but about how to care for our residents as well. Um, now on the education team, our staff members come from a lot of diverse backgrounds, so if you're interested in going into education at the aquarium, uh, we do look for candidates that have um, a bachelor's degree and our education staff members have degrees in everything from marine science to environmental policy, biology, education, psychology, and more. Our educators must be skilled in public speaking, group management, and have a passion for teaching and conserving our environment. Those are all of the things we look for. So we're going to move on here to our animal care and protection. Again, a huge part of what we do, a huge part of our mission here, and it takes a lot of people to be successful at this. Uh, you can see up at the top here, we have our veterinary staff there. We have two uh, veterinarians that are uh, contracted to come in on staff for us. Pictured there in the green scrubs is Dr. Walsh. And then we have some of our marine biologists, um, also vet techs in that picture as well, doing a procedure with our turtles. And um, just by caring for the animals we rescue and rehabilitate and also our resident animals, we learn a great deal about how to improve medical procedures, husbandry techniques, um, you know, make policy suggestions and more. And of course, because we're a research facility, we share what we learn with other facilities to help improve what they're doing um, out in the wild and with different aquariums and their resident animals as well, uh, which is a great thing that we're able to contribute to. So our veterinary staff here is very, very busy caring for our, not only our residents but our rescued animals as well. Currently the Clearwater Marine Aquarium is one of only four facilities in Florida that can care for turtles who are afflicted with the fibropapilloma virus. Now this virus causes rapid tumor growth on sea turtles, primarily green sea turtles is what we see uh, the, the tumors on the most, and our veterinary staff uh, has equipment like a an actual laser, a medical laser that they can use to remove the PAPS tumors from these animals and hopefully uh, rehabilitate them back until they're well enough to be returned to the environment. Now if any of you have seen our latest movie, Dolphin Tale 2, you might remember a turtle named Mavis in that movie that uh, best friend of Rufus helped to rescue um, and was eventually released. And that turtle was actually played by one of our residents, Harold. And Harold was once afflicted with the fibropapilloma virus. His tumors were removed and um, now he is able to be out 
in the aquarium with our other resident animals. Unfortunately, due to a vision processing problem, he couldn't be released back into the wild. But we're very proud of him for his work in the movie, and he is a wonderful animal you're able to come and see here at the aquarium in person. Our veterinarians not only um, you know have the difficult process of removing those tumors, but they for our rescued animals they'll come in with many unique challenges like removing ingested fish hooks. Uh, also, they design physical therapy routines for uh, our the world's only tailless dolphin, which you may be familiar with, and we'll talk a little bit more about her later. Now, becoming a veterinarian or vet can be a very, very rewarding career, but it's very challenging and demanding. Uh, to begin your career in veterinary medicine, especially for marine animals, you must pursue a bachelor's degree um, before continuing on to professional school for another minimum of four years of classroom time. And after completing your doctor's of veterinary medicine degree, relevant experience within the marine animal field is crucial. So interning, working as a vet tech in that field is really important to gain that experience. And you can gain it, again, through those externships, volunteering, and other work-related experiences in emergency marine and exotic animal care. So there's lots of learning to do to become a veterinarian to do this really, really amazing and very difficult work. I'm going to move on here. Ah, oh, marine biologists. We have a lot of wonderful marine biologists here at our aquarium, and they're involved in a wide array of duties. It takes many knowledgeable staff members to care for all of our rescued and resident animals. Um, and it is, it is hard work. Uh, when I was spending time helping out in the sea turtle department, which is our department that takes care of the most resident animals, the most rescued animals. It is a ton of hard work, especially keeping the tanks that our animals are in clean. We not only do a lot of food prep, diet preparation, making sure everybody's getting the food they need, sorting those squid and fish and all those wonderful, smelly, delicious things that everybody uh, loves to handle. But it's also cleaning up what comes out of the other end of the turtles and making sure that their environments are as clean as possible so that they stay healthy. Uh, you'll see up here we have a picture of several of our biologists as well as animal trainers caring for a, an Atlantic spotted dolphin that we rescued on July 4th from Indian Rocks Beach. This is MMPL 1407 or as we affectionately call her Mimple and she has received 24-7 care from our stranding team, our biologists, uh, our volunteers and training staff to make sure that she is you know, restored back to health. It's a lot of hard work, and again, 24-7, somebody's out there all night long with her doing everything from feedings, um, making sure her time is enriching, and, um, you know, delivering medicine when she needed it, and even counting every breath she takes. So we have thousands and thousands of pages of observations from caring for her. So there's really a lot of work, time, and effort that goes into rehabbing animals like this. We'll zoom out here. Um, again, we also have our sea turtle department, our folks down here doing some care on, I believe, a loggerhead sea turtle, getting a uh, feeding, getting some medicine there, injected directly into the bloodstream. So it's a lot of really, really hard work that we have to do. Um, our food is also prepared in an extremely sanitized environment, so it's clean multiple times a day, which can be an awful lot of hard work as well. Our biologists are also in charge of our extensive sea turtle nesting program. We monitor 32 miles of Pinellas County beaches looking for sea turtle tracks that hopefully lead us to where those mother sea turtles have laid their nests. And I'm going to show you a little video now all about our sea turtles. All right, and here we go. This is a mama loggerhead sea turtle crawling up onto the beach at night to lay her nest. The only time you should ever see a sea turtle on the beach naturally is when they are nesting. Otherwise, sea turtles should always be in the water. And if you do see one up on the beach, you should call the Clearwater Marine Aquarium or 911 immediately so we can get that animal some help. But you see here, during nesting, those Mama sea turtles will crawl up onto the beach and dig a nest cavity with their back flippers. 
and they'll dig down deep and fling that sand off to the side to make a deep enough cavity to lay 80 to 100 ping pong ball size eggs. And you can see her doing that now. Those eggs are leathery. They're not hard and easy to crack like bird eggs would be, so they can make that drop. Then Mama Sea Turtle will cover up the nest and actually pack down the sand a little bit to help keep those eggs safe and moist. And then she'll fling the sand all over the place with her big front flippers to camouflage the nest so hopefully predators won't be able to find it. And then she crawls back into the ocean because her job as a Mama Sea Turtle is done. She might never see those babies again. Um, there she goes. So even though Mama Sea Turtle's job is done, our job at the aquarium has just begun because we have folks go out at 5 o'clock in the morning and patrol the beaches looking for the nest. They'll flag them off like you saw Mike doing in that picture there. And then 50 to 70 days later, those nests will hatch. And you can see all those little baby sea turtles held safely inside a restraining cage. Now we put restraining cages over the nest for many reasons, but the most important reason is disorientation due to light pollution. Baby sea turtles are very attracted to, to bright lights, and if they see the bright lights of cities and buildings, they'll head towards those instead of towards the ocean where they need to go to be safe and, and sound from traffic and predators and things like that. So we'll get them out of those restraining cages, we'll dig a trench in the sand, we'll count those baby sea turtles, we'll set them down on the sand and watch them as they safely crawl into the ocean. And you can see it's quite a scramble to get to the sea there with all those little babies heading down to the water together. And these are all little baby loggerheads, really tiny sea turtles. In my summer camp program this year, I was fortunate enough to take a bunch of campers out to actually witness this happening in person. So a really unique experience to have and a wonderful experience to have to see these animals get out into the ocean. These little babies will swim for miles until they reach the weed line. You can see this guy here hiding safely in some sargassum. And as they grow, they'll swim around the entire Atlantic Ocean. And maybe 25 to 30 years later, when, if they're female, they'll return to the same nesting beaches to start the process all over again with families of their own. So it's a pretty amazing thing to be a part of, especially since only 1 in 100 to 1 in 1,000 baby sea turtles will grow up and live, you know, live into their 20s and 30s in order to have baby sea turtles of their own. So it's really important that we give them the best possible start in life so as many as possible can come back and nest again. All right, so I'm going to forward on here because something else I want to tell you about is our animal training department and this is probably the career a lot of you may have a lot of interest in or have heard a lot about since animal training uh, you know can be a really exciting and interesting part of working at an aquarium um, but it's also a lot of hard work too and I can't stress that to you enough it's also an extremely competitive career to get into animal training um, you know is something a lot of people would like to do but the number of people who want to do it versus the number of jobs that are actually available can be really, really different. But we're really fortunate here at the aquarium to have 10 different folks on our um, animal training staff. Um, you can see from our first picture here that husbandry is a really important part of what our animal care staff does. And husbandry is the care and management of our animals. So a lot of that has to do with medical management. You can see our adorable North American River Otter Cooper here has been trained to hold his mouth open when his trainer uh, opens his or her fingers. And that is so we can manage his teeth, look at them for dental exams, we don't have to force his mouth open, he'll hold it open willingly. And that's a really important part of all the animal training we do here at the aquarium. It's all positive reinforcements. So if our animals don't want to do something, they choose not to do it, there's no punishment, we don't withhold food from them, all of our animals get the full amount of food they are supposed to have every day, uh, but we in, we incentivize these things. We make sure that doing these behaviors, they get those rewards, they get attention, they get food, they get toys, they get novel experiences to encourage them to keep doing it more in the future. 
Now, not only can Cooper here trust us enough to hold his mouth open and check his teeth, but our animals are trained to sit quietly while we do um, blood draws. They are trained to swallow pills so they can get all the medicine they need. So it's really, really important that they are able to do all of these behaviors, even climb up onto a scale to get weighed. Cooper has to do that on a regular basis. So it's um, important for their health and safety that they are positively encouraged to do these kinds of behaviors. We'll scoot over here to therapy. Oh, there's that dolphin I was talking about. Our friend Winter, the most famous dolphin in the world and also the only dolphin in the world to have survived after losing her tail flipped. So her tail, that, that last portion of her body there that actually helps her swim. Now, the therapy that we do here with Winter is groundbreaking research, again, because she is the only dolphin in the world that has this issue um, that is under human care. So we work very hard to make sure that she gets the kind of exercise she needs, the physical therapy she needs, to keep her body healthy and strong, even though she is missing her tail flus. And that's something our animal care team does with her almost every single day. They've trained her to not only you know sit quietly while she wears the tail, but to move her body up and down her peduncle, that end of the body there behind her dorsal fin, to move it up and down so she gets the appropriate exercise she needs in order to stay healthy and strong. Um, and it helps manage her injury a lot better than if she didn't have the prosthetic tail and didn't get that really important exercise. Um, now we were talking about positive reinforcement and something that's positively reinforcing for our animals is enrichment time. Oh, and here's the fun stuff. The enrichment time is when we mentally um, stimulate our animals in order to make sure that they are happy in their homes here and um, having a diverse array of activities so they don't get bored. And that can involve everything from putting toys in the water to putting novel things to dig in for our otters with neat smells they can investigate making um, ice toys for our sea turtles so they can chase around and bite at in the water and even like Sue's doing in this picture with Hope getting right into the water with them and going for a swim um, and interacting with them in a lot of different ways one of our our only male dolphin Nicholas uh, does this really cool game where we have matching sets of toys We'll put a bunch of different toys in the water, and then we'll hold up a specific toy, and then he has to go find the matching one. So that's very stimulating for him. He's using his brain. It can show you how intelligent these animals really are. And they have fun, so they really, really enjoy these enrichment activities, and it makes their lives a lot more fun and helps us educate folks on just how intelligent these animals are. So it's really, really cool. Um, now, dolphin trainers need to know a lot about dolphins, uh, especially how they behave, and um, thus most of our trainers here at CMA have degrees in psychology along with furthered studies in biology um, and zoology. A four-year bachelor's degree is a really good start if you're interested in a career in training, but experience in animal training really helps. And it doesn't have to be with marine animals. It can be cats, dogs, any, any animal training experience can be really, really valuable. Uh, many of our trainers start out by volunteering or interning at marine animal facilities, just like here at the aquarium. Um, and again, it's a job that's really high in demand, so if you want to go into this field, you should be you know, willing to relocate. You may have to move across the country to find uh, a training job that fits with you and you may have to start at the bottom and work your way up which is also a great way to learn as well all right, so I'm going to jump ahead here. Ah, and of course, the rescue and rehab. So, so important and a huge part of what we do here. We have a stranding line that's monitored 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We will take calls um, in any weather, any holiday, any season to come out and help our marine animals in need. You can see here up on the screen in 2013, we responded to 128 bird calls, 198 sea turtle calls calls, five manatees, and three cetaceans, so that means dolphins and whales. Now, we have the 2013 numbers up here because 2014 isn't over yet. You are rescuing um, and rehabilitating, you know, doesn't slow down for the season, so we have our last year numbers up there as well. Um, now, not all of the animals we rescue end up here at the aquarium. Uh, we are mainly involved in the rehabilitation of sea turtles and cetaceans. We will do immediate emergency medical care for animals like 
like uh, North American river otters, and we do transport for our marine bird life, like pelicans and um, grebes, herons, all those kinds of animals. We'll transfer those to another facility where they have the more um, specialized care and equipment they need to take care of those animals. Um, we also respond to some really unique animals like uh, sperm whales, pilot whales, and leatherback sea turtles, which can be a big job because those are some big animals. Um, we also have a nice picture up here. Uh, you can see up here one of our manatee rescues. So that can be a big job for a lot of people where we will help rescue those animals and also transfer them to other, other facilities that can care for them like Lowry Park Zoo. Um, in our next video, I'm going to show you a clip of the actual rescue of our newest resident, our newest dolphin, uh, Hope. And you may have seen her in Dolphin Tale 2, seen Harry Connick Jr. carrying her out of the stranding van and into the facility. And that was actually modeled off after her actual rescue. So we're going to zoom in here. And you can get a chance to view this video. Oop, if it'll let me. You let me reload here. Little technical difficulties. All right, so we'll try and load that up there for you. Um, but again, you know, Hope came here very, very young. She was rescued from very close to where Winter was actually rescued. And she came to our facility. She was only maybe two, three months old. So she was a very small, very young animal when she came here to the facility. Um, and even though Hope is physically healthy, you can see. Hi everyone, hold on for just a minute. I think um, looks like maybe the internet connection just left us and here comes Anastasia. She's back. So just give us one sec and we'll get her back up. There she is. There we are. I don't know what happened, Stacey. I have no idea. I, I know all of a sudden you were gone. So I jumped I was like, hey, we're still here. Hold on. So I don't know if maybe some kind of glitch in the internet real quick or what happened there? Yeah, it, was, it looked like it was a plug-in issue. Um, where did I lose you? What was I talking about? Um, you were talking about Hope. Um, oh, talking great. about Hope's story and I know the video wasn't cooperating. So yeah, I don't... let me try and get that back up there. Well, actually, you know, since you can see me now, I can introduce you to the little friends I brought in here because that's really very exciting to see some live yeah. animals in our presentation. So that's earlier wonderful. we were talking about the um, Sea Life Safari Tour where we do that otter trawl net and actually you know, gently scoop up some animals right from our environment. Uh, some of them come back to our classroom touch tank, which is a really cool thing we are able to show the kids that come here for programs and camps and things like that. So I want to show you a few of those neat animals. And we'll start, we'll start with the weirdest one first. Come here, little friend. All right. So here I have a purple variegated sea urchin, a very common animal out here in our waters. And you may not even think of it as something that's alive. It just kind of looks like a spiky rock, but it actually is a living animal. It's in the echinoderm family, which means spiky skin, which you can definitely see and it can hold hmm. oh it had just frozen up Anastasia do I still have you there here that little circle in the center is actually his mouth where he has five little scraping teeth where he will move along the seafloor and scrape algae off of rocks or munch up plants and these guys are herbivores. 
Oop, it looks like I'm experiencing some connectivity, so I hope you all can still see me. Um, and you can see here at the aquarium, we do feed them plants. He's got a little bit of his dinner stuck to him right here, some romaine lettuce, which uh, they munch on here in our tanks. And you can also see he's got this shell he's hanging on to up top. He, I'm not doing that. He's doing that. He's using his tube feet to hold on to shells, which they'll do out in the marine environment as well. They'll hold shells all over their bodies to help disguise them so they can hide from animals that want to eat them, like those loggerhead sea turtles we were seeing nest on our beaches. So this guy's pretty cool here. Let me put him back in the water, get you another friend. Here's another strange one. All right, so this guy I only have out for a little bit of time, but this is a spider crab. And you can kind of see where he gets his name from those long legs he's got on there. And our spider crabs also live in our seagrass beds, but they'll they'll eat other animals and also um, detritus, so you know things that are breaking. And hide from animals that want to eat them, like those loggerhead sea turtles. Oh, looks like. Anastasia, I think I lost you again. All right, and while we are waiting for her connection to come back, I did want to let a few of you know, I did get a few questions coming in, and when she comes back up uh, after our spider crab, we'll start to get to some of these questions for you. Okay, um, while we're, oh, I'm already there. Okay, while we're waiting, um, I'd like to let everybody know, I know some that, I know that some of you are aware that I actually do work at the Clearwater Aquarium, as well as eSchool. Um, for those of you who know me, Mrs. Maniscalco, I am one of the science teachers, but I also work in education with Anastasia. So we get to have a lot of fun there, doing lots of different things. Um, and so many of the little critters that she's showing you and the things that she's been talking about, I've actually had very similar experiences and have gotten to do many of these things hands-on as well. Um, I think, do, I, do we have Anastasia back? Anastasia, is that you? Yep, I think we got it. There you are. Yep, ah. I, was that, I was just telling everybody that I get to work with you at the aquarium and kind of go over talking about some of the things that I get to do out I get to go out on the boat and play with those critters that you're handling and all those types of things. So yeah. I'll hand it back over to you and the spider crab. And oh, I yeah, we'll have, grab him I again. have a couple questions coming in for you as well. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll finish up with these guys real quick because they are pretty cool. Um, yeah, so Stacy's one of our Sea Life Safari veterans. She gets to check out these cool critters a lot of the time. Now, my little friend up here, he is at the aquarium because he came up in one of our nets, and we're hanging on to him for a while because you can see perhaps he's missing both of his front pincers. So he doesn't really have a way to defend himself out in the environment, so he's going to stay with us through a few molts and hopefully grow some of those legs back. Um, but you can see he's got different barnacles on him, which is pretty neat. Um, even one right up here on his little nose, which is kind of cute as well. <laughs> um, and we do feed these guys krill here at the aquarium. I'm going to put him back in the water, show you our last guy. Come here, buddy. Now these guys are pretty cool. These are one of our hermit crabs. You can see he's hiding in his shell there. I'll kind of hold him up close and hopefully he'll come out and wave. Um, hermit crabs here, they do not make their own shells. They actually find shells um, discarded out in the environment. Snails grow these shells. They start out very, very tiny, like 
the tip of this shell here, and they'll grow larger and larger and larger. But if they're eaten um, and are no longer in their shells, the hermit crabs will make a home in them. And they actually have special tiny back legs that they'll use to hold onto the shell as they walk around and drag it around in their environment. So their home goes everywhere with them. And this little guy here is a flat claw hermit crab. Whoop! I think I surprised him. He jumped back in. <laughs> um, and these are guys you can see out snorkeling on the Sea Life Safari boats. Or whoop! <laughs> Maybe he's a little camera shy. Um, and they're really, really neat animals. We also feed these guys krill, but they'll eat plants um, and break down other materials in the environment as well. So these guys are pretty neat. And I'm being careful because he does have his front claws, and they can deliver quite a pinch. So if you do see these guys out there, be very, very careful. Um, not only for their safety, but for yours as well. Pretty cool. All right. Um, so, of course, you know, the goal of everything we do here at the aquarium is not only to care for our residents, but to release the animals we rehabilitate as well. Um, and the most common patient is also our most common release, those sea turtles, which is so super important because all sea turtles in the world are endangered, and we want to make sure we care for them um, as well out in the environment. Now, I'm going to take a big risk, and I'm going to try and screen share so I can show you a release video here. We'll see if it works. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's not going to let me do it. No. Um, but if you go on, um, if you go with your parents, you go on YouTube, you can find our CMA channel, and we have tons of great videos of releases of our um, of our different animals, also their rescues as well. So it's a great place to check out with your parents and see the kind of work that we do here. Um, so Stacey, if you said you had some questions, I'm happy to answer anything the folks are sending in to you. Yeah, one of, actually the first one I received was, do you only rescue sea life or freshwater organisms like alligators, freshwater birds, you know, lake otters, or we know river otters, you know, the freshwater guys. Who do we take in and who do we send, you know, basically elsewhere? We are primarily focused on marine animals. And again, the animals that we can take care of here at the facility uh, are our um, cetaceans, so our marine um, you know, dolphins and whales, as well as any and all sea turtles. And we also do triage, so that means take in and do emergency rescues and transfers of North American river otters. We do go out and rescue a lot of marine birds like gulls and pelicans, willets, shorebirds, all of those guys as well. But we are not we don't have the expertise and the training to go out and do things like alligators and things like that. Um, if you do see an animal like that in trouble, the best thing to do is call FWC, the Florida Wildlife Conservation Commission, or 911, and they will connect you with appropriate help for those kinds of animals. Thank you. And also, I have a text from Austin. Um, is there somewhere that they can find more information on volunteering, um, volunteering and the camps, camping, things like that, the things that we yes. have to offer. Absolutely. Yeah, you can find all of that information on our website. It's seewinter.com, S-E-E-winter.com, and you can find out about volunteering, the programs we offer here, you know, our boating programs, uh, places to stay in the area, the, you know, our uh, resident animals. We have webcams of our resident animals as well, which are really cool to check out. So you can find all of those things on our website. Okay, and what is um, what is your favorite part of working at the aquarium? What do you like? Oh, that is that is really tough. I know um, how tough that question is. I've answered that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, one of the things that's always always really important to me is to have an environment where I'm always learning. I'm always getting an opportunity to experience and learn new things. Uh, where I worked before, I was up at a nature center in Chicago, so I was doing prairie ecology and forest ecology and learning and educating about that. And then to come down here and do marine ecology and learn about those animals and be near those wonderful animals, our residents and our rescued animals, is, is one of my favorite things. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity 
opportunities I've had to volunteer in other departments like the sea turtles and the stranding departments to help me learn more about the work we do here and about the animals and the environment themselves. So it's definitely that every day is different, learning new things every day atmosphere that's really um, the most exciting part for me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Um, I'm still taking some more. Let's see. They're coming in. Um, did you, and I know you mentioned um, starting off many of our staff, you know, I started off as a volunteer about 14 years ago, <laughs> and our staff was a total of 12 people. So when you joined us, were you doing some volunteer things? Did you join us directly with staff? Because I know that it's all... You know, I have. We've got interns. We've got everybody. Were you doing other things as well? Yeah, when I started, I did start as staff. I was doing um, teaching at some other places down here, um, doing some camp programs elsewhere, doing some classroom teaching. So I came in uh, as staff on the education department. But yeah, a lot of our volunteers move into the staff role. A lot of our interns move into the staff role um, and move from entry-level positions to management positions. So it's a place that you can grow with, which is an exciting thing to be able to do as well. Okay. And um, do you, do they, or do we work with manatees? Just we do help with the rescue of manatees. So um, we will go with um, Florida Wildlife Conservation Commission and other organizations to help um, capture and rescue manatees because as you probably know, they are absolutely enormous animals, and even though they look slow and docile, they can be very powerful, especially if they're not feeling well and they're scared. So it takes a lot of people to get in there and um, help rescue those animals, and that's something we participate in, but we will ultimately transfer them to other facilities like Lowry Park Zoo for treatment. We do not bring them here for treatment. Okay, and I think we also help with releases. One, I think we saw that we had helped with a release of a manatee not too long ago. Yeah, and that's another thing. It takes a lot, a lot of folks um, to help yeah. with that. We're, um, some of our staff are involved in uh, manatee health assessments, so we will help with those kinds of activities as well. All right. Well, thank you, Anastasia. Thank you so much for joining us today for our for first me. ever live streaming virtual Great American Teach-In. Um, is there anything else, uh, anything else that we can do? Any, anything else you'd like to tell us? Um, I'd like to also thank everybody who joined us today. Hope that you guys had a good time. Um, there will be information coming out for if this is going to be a collaborative project and things like that. But, um, but I think that uh, we are all set. Oh, one quick, one last quick question just came in. What animals do we rescue the most? Uh, definitely our sea turtles. They come in very frequently from a host of different issues, from human interaction like boat strikes and swallowing fish hooks to natural things like cold stun and red tide. They are definitely our most common patient. Our sea turtle department works very, very hard to do everything they can for every single one. And um, you know, we have releases of them as well, which is always a wonderful thing to see. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Anastasia, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope you had fun, and if you like, we have more sessions coming up later on this afternoon. All right. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Come visit us. Thank you.